first aspect of pre-analysis is to look at the mathematical model that we are solving using um, the tool, the ANSYS tool. So the governing equations and the that form the mathematical model are the 3D differential equations of equilibrium that are shown over here. So for instance, that's a normal stress, that's a shear stress. And the physics contained within this equation is that at equilibrium, forces on an infinitesimal element are in balance. <clears throat> so if F equal to MA, there is no acceleration at equilibrium, and so the sum of the forces on the part should um, be zero. And essentially, you know, we are taking a differential element or infinitesimal element and drawing a free body diagram on it to to uh, get these equations. The boundary conditions are that at every point in the domain, the traction or displacement has to be defined. And this is true both in the normal as well as the tangential direction. And we'll apply the displacements and tractions as shown. So these three holes are going to be fixed. So all components of the displacements are going to be zero here. This hole that's highlighted in red, we are going to apply a force. And so the equivalent traction is the force of 100 pounds divided by the the surface area of that of that hole. All other boundaries are set to zero traction by default in ANSYS. Now the boundary conditions are applied to selected uh, stresses and selected displacements. And but the unknowns in the governing equations are just stresses, which means that to close the equation set, we need to relate stresses to the displacements. And that's what we do using additional equations. So we use two additional equations. The first one is the equations of compatibility or the strain displacement relations that are shown over here. So these relate the displacements to the strains. And then we also have um, the Hooke's law, which relates the strains to the, the stresses. So with these two equations, we relate the stresses to the displacements. So to summarize the mathematical model, the governing equations are the 3D equilibrium equations. Boundary conditions are traction or displacement specified at every point on the boundary in normal and tangential directions. Additional relations are the compatibility or strain displacement relations and Hooke's law. OK, the second aspect of pre-analysis is to think about what is the numerical solution strategy that uh, ANSYS is going to use to solve this mathematical model. So our mathematical model is a boundary value problem, governing equations plus boundary conditions. And ANSYS is going to convert that into a set of algebraic equations um, through the finite element discretization. And these algebraic equations are going to relate neighboring nodal displacements. Conventionally, the set of algebraic equations is written as this, kd equals q, or some variation of that notation. And so each row of d is going to relate one, nod one component of the nodal displacement to uh, the neighboring nodal displacements. And then once we have, um, once ANSYS forms that um, system, it inverts it to determine what the nodal displacements are, and everything else is constructed from the nodal displacements through the um, post-processing step. The third aspect of pre-analysis is hand calculations to predict expected results. In this case, our uh, part is fixed over here, and we have an um, a force being applied here. So this looks like uh, 
a cantilever beam in bending. And so we can use beam theory to predict the bending stress along the line AB in the middle of the crank. Now, the conventional beam theory that we come across is for constant cross-section where the bending stress is given by this classic formula. Now, we can extend this to varying cross-section if the rate of variation of the cross-section is small. And in this case, uh, it, it's reasonable to assume that. So what we can do is we can use the local uh, I and Y over here and um, plug that into this uh, m by by i. And if we do that, uh, we predict the values for, we can predict the values of the bending stress at, at a and b, and they are going to vary linearly between that. So that's something to compare to the ANSYS result. The other hand calculation we can do is to predict what the expected maximum displacement is. Now, conventional beam theory, we have for constant cross-section, you know, we have this equation for the maximum displacement. But in our case, the cross-section varies. So the beam height varies between 0.6 inches and 2 inches. So now we can see that, okay, if the beam height were constant at this value, we can calculate what the, um, the maximum displacement is. And similarly, if the beam height were constant at this value, we can predict what the maximum displacement is from this equation. So this is for a much thicker beam that we, than we have, or thinner beam than we have, and this is for a thicker beam that we have. So our own maximum displacement from ANSYS, we expect to lie within this range. And here, in this slide, we are trying to compare the hand calculation approach to the ANSYS approach. How are the mathematical models same or different? So we are a physical problem, and in the ANSYS approach, we are solving the 3D equilibrium equations. And using ANSYS, we can you know, directly solve that and do a numerical solution. Now, when we're doing the hand calculations using beam theory, we are making these assumptions, that plane sections remain plane, curvature is constant, and these are, you know, the first two are conventional uh, assumptions made with beam theory, and in this case, we also need to make the additional um, assumption that the cross-section variation is small. With these assumptions, we can perform hand calculations and, and, you know, predict the bending stress and maximum displacement. But one important takeaway from this is that um, the hand calculations is using a very different mathematical model than the, the ANSYS approach. And in the ANSYS approach, we don't make any of these assumptions. But if these assumptions are reasonable, then we expect that these values should match what we get from ANSYS. And that's something we will check in verification and validation.